Yeah, I'm James A. Willis, and I'm the artist in residence at Gibson Guitars. And we're here at the Music Zoo uh, showing off some of the work we've done over the last six or eight months. Now, how did you get started working for Gibson? What, what, tell me about that whole process, where it came from. Well, I think maybe even to clarify right from the beginning is I'm not really working for Gibson. Gibson, uh, um, in a moment of like really, what I think is like really cool wisdom and insight, uh, asked me to come and just do my normal art and then see if I was inspired, you know, by, by guitars as well. So they're supporting me to do my normal everyday stuff that I would normally do, and uh, and then what happens with the guitars was just became a bigger part of that. So originally, I was approached about doing a New York themed guitar. So they were you know just looking to embellish a guitar and make it feel like a New York City guitar. And uh, I was a, the, uh, they, they, they approached me because I'm known for painting paintings of New York City. That's how I make my living. And, you know, what they didn't know about me at the time was that, you know, I would do all this other stuff, like motorcycles, surfboards, and, you know, I was always experimenting with making different things. And that never really had a place for my, in my fine art world. So I said, well, hey, look, why don't I customize the guitar, and I'll just let that come with the painting. And they were interested in that idea, so they sent me a blank of a Les Paul. And then uh, Henry Jeskowitz, um, you know, he saw what I was doing, and I think he got he got it that, that I was really motivated. Uh, like the, the guitar became like my muse. You know, I can't speak for him, but from my insider's view of the company, you know, he, he's always having to think about the future, or what's next, or what's the new technology pushing, and keeping the company from becoming stagnant. And I think in some ways the custom shop and then even me coming in with the custom shop, we're, we're sort of like, you know, the guys in the rear view mirror polishing the guitar. So he saw that and he, he's, you know, we, we set up the residency for the dude just, just really became just what I was naturally doing. And, and, and I think that, I know that there are a lot of, you know, I'm not working on, I, I would never dream of, somebody had a 30 year old Les Paul, and they said, hey James, do a pinstripe on this for me. I wouldn't touch it with a 10 foot pole. These are things that the luthiers are putting together with the same kind of attention to detail because it's a custom shop that they would have done a guitar in 1957. And, and then I'm getting to do it. I try to think of it as heart, an instrument that I would love to own and play. And then I just sort of like twist that so like this guitar, for instance, if, if I lived in 1780 and I'm sitting around with nothing to do, I probably would have scrimshawed my musket. And so that's what happened here. This is all the plastic was replaced with, with bone and scrimshawed. That's a patch box. There's a pick in there. Comes with a powder horn, which I learned how to make years ago for some reason. I don't know why. And then also the custom strap. Which normally I would just tool, but in this case, because it really needed to have a special kind of level of uh, support for these heavy and some not always heavy, but sometimes heavy instruments that are very valuable, you know, I didn't want to trust my mad skills at holding it together. So I reached out to uh, another artist who worked with leather, who then takes my came up with a custom design for the strap. I tool it. He stitches it, and, and then it's, it's that combination of things that I think is at the heart of the artist in residence program at Gibson.